You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. This is segment two of episode 51. We're reviewing distribution and exploring its relationship to habitat. Now this map shows the range of Virginia opossums. As you can see, these animals are found in many parts of the United States, much like the black bears we saw earlier. Now we're asking the question, why are some animals more widely distributed than others? Well, the answer to that question could well have to do with the habitat needs of the animal. In the case of Virginia opossums, the answer lies in their adaptability. They can have their needs met in many different habitats, so they're found in many different areas. They find that many of their needs are met where people live, so often that's where they're found. So just what are we talking about when we use the word habitat? Well, many confuse habitat with the area that an animal lives, but they're not the same thing. Now let's look at habitat as the needs an animal has. Now needs and habitats, these are common needs shared by all animals. It's no surprise that all animals need food, but not all animals need the same food, and animals have different ways of getting the food they can eat. So their habitat must supply food they can eat and food they can get from the environment in which they live. An example is a polar bear. Their main food is a seal, and they need large sheets of floating ice because of the way they hunt seals. Their habitat must have all these elements so they can get the food they need to survive. Now, water is an obvious need. Not every animal uses the same water source, though. Shelter is another issue. Some rabbits need thick vegetation in which to hide and escape predators. Deer seem to only need some soft grass on which to bed down and some trees for the shade they produce. Shelter needs change with the place animals occupy in their life cycle. A bird's nest provides shelter for their eggs and the defenseless chicks that hatch from them. Space is a need that's sometimes more subtle than the other needs. A cougar needs lots of area in which to roam and find prey. A raccoon may only need an acre or two to meet its needs. Deprived of sufficient space, some animals may survive, but they'll be stressed and they won't thrive. Here's a North American animal that's highly adaptable. Much like the Virginia opossum we saw earlier, raccoons are easily recognized by their dark area around their eyes and their ringed tails. Like all animals, they need a habitat that will meet their specific needs. They're larger than a cat, but smaller than many dogs. This raccoon was spotted near a dwelling along the Umpqua River in Oregon. Now, while capable of finding food in a range of habitats, this individual was looking for something that people may have left behind. So raccoons are not shy around people. Like the Virginia opossum, they get some of their habitat needs met wherever people live, including urban areas. Originally, raccoons lived in wooded areas in the forest where they are still very much at home. Most are found around sources of water which they drink and in which they wash their food. Now, speaking of food, in the forest, they find nuts, seeds, berries, and invertebrates on which to feed. In urban and suburban areas, they use their dexterous front paws to manipulate human-produced food. They seem to specialize in opening garbage cans and even food containers. Food left out for pets is also a favorite, as well as pet food inside a house with dog doors. Yes, they'll come right inside and empty the dish. In terms of shelter, the forest provides bountiful places for raccoons to hide from predators and raise their young. In areas dominated by people, they find shelter in buildings, culverts, and storm drains, and one took up residence in my garage. So out on the front of the uh, wildlife card on raccoons, we can see that they arrange they have their range all the way across the United States and parts of Canada and Mexico. Now, if you're familiar with North American geography, you'll notice that two mountain ranges from which the raccoons are absent, the Rocky Mountains and the Cascade Mountains. Raccoons are absent from central 
Mexico as well, perhaps because of the arid climate. Now inside the wildlife card, there's a section devoted to habitat. We read here that raccoons are natives of forests and swamps in areas of temperate climate. Now we're scanning this wildlife card for facts. We write down information from the source, not the wording between the facts. So here are some notes that would be helpful. Forests, swamps, urban, suburban. For food, we wrote down nuts, seeds, berries, invertebrates, human food, pet food. For water, we wrote that they choose to live a short distance from water. Shelter, we wrote down cavities in trees, abandoned nest of other animals, and dwellings made by humans. Now, with this list of notes, let's create some sentences about habitats of raccoons. Here are a few examples using the notes we took. I've put some of the wording in all capital letters, and this gives you some phrases you can use in the activity and other descriptions of animals' habitat. So here's what I wrote down. Since raccoons are so widely distributed in North America, uh, let's see, uh, let's begin with the connection between their range and the habitat. Raccoons populate most areas of North America, as well as southern Canada and parts of Mexico. They thrive in places where people live, finding food, water, and shelter where there are humans. Now, their traditional habitats are forests and swamps. Now, both areas provide ample food in the form of nuts, berries, seeds, and invertebrates. Sources of water are often present there. Trees provide shelter in the nests of other animals and in naturally occurring cavities. Now, raccoons also have spread out from those areas to the cities and towns of people, uh, finding ample food in the garbage cans and pet feeders there. As for shelter, raccoons make themselves at home in human-built dwellings, as well as culverts and storm sewers. Now again, I've written the words that connect your notes in all capital letters. These words and phrases can be used to describe the habitats of many animals. You'll find this list on my website, letscreate.org. Now, while you might find a first draft of your sentences are a little rough, your advantage in writing them is much greater than just copying the words used on the wildlife cards. Now, earlier in this episode, I said I would help you make a connection between an animal's distribution and their habitats. I also promise to help you distinguish between the two. So let's start with the raccoon. You'll remember that they pretty much cover the continent of North America. That's their distribution. Now, when you think about their habitats, you can see why they're spread out so widely. When it comes to getting their needs met with food, water, shelter, and space, they can meet those needs just about anywhere that people live. And they do. Perhaps we should look at where they don't live. Northern Canada and the peaks of the Rocky Mountains and the Cascade Mountain Range. These are areas that cross the limit of what they can do to get their needs met. We know that these areas are very cold in the winter. So you could say that raccoons could live in a number of habitats, but not in alpine or arctic areas. Now looking south into Mexico, their distribution ends in an area called the tropics. These areas have extremes as well as the alpine and arctic areas, but instead of being too cold, they're too hot. Any animal that can live in so many different habitats, from the deserts of Arizona to the subtropics of Florida, can be said to be highly adaptable. That means they can get their needs met for food, water, shelter, and space, get those needs met in many different ways. And that's another way of saying that many habitats will work for raccoons. Now, in contrast to the raccoon, the grizzly bear is only found in a small part of North America. When we look at a grizzly bear's habitat, we see that these om omnivores have some great adaptations for survival, especially in their grasslands habitat. They are known as apex predators. They get to prey on numerous animals, but virtually nothing preys on them. They are powerful and fairly adaptable. So why aren't they more widely distributed? Look in the mirror and you'll find the answer. 
you'll see the most dangerous predator of all. Grizzly bears are not adaptable to living near people. So as humans develop homes in grizzly territory, grizzlies lose the habitat that once served them so well. Now, people have often feared grizzly bears and killed them as a result. So they've retreated to the mountains and the vast spaces of Alaska as a result. With fearful humans and their guns and developments, grizzly bears lose the habitat space, their need of space. Not only is their distribution not expanding, it's rapidly shrinking. So we can see how the habitat and distribution are linked to each other. Adaptability to different habitats can result in wider distribution. A shrinking habitat often results in a shrinking distribution. But how are habitat and distribution different? Well, distribution or range can be seen on a map and described in geographic terms. But habitat refers to the kinds of conditions that meet an animal's needs. A river otter needs bodies of water, rivers, lakes, and marsh. Those kinds of areas are its habitat, whether they're located in Florida or in Oregon.